Have you ever wondered which of your beauty products are safe to use around your eyes? Well, I'm an eye doctor, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you about one product that you should never use near your eyes. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Hello, I'm Dr. D. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. On this channel, I post educational videos about eye health as well as vision products. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell down below so that you never miss a video. You're welcome to check out the information down below because I'll include some helpful notes and helpful research so you can learn more about the topic. Today I'm going to tell you all about retinol and we're going to go through some of the studies that say it's not the best thing to be using next to your eyes. I'll tell you what retinol is, what types of beauty products you can expect to see it in, and we'll talk specifics about what exactly it does to the eyes that is not the best. All right, my pupils, it is time for eye school. Okay, so retinol is something that you've probably heard of if you're at all interested in skincare, beauty products, anti-aging. It's very prevalent in many of those types of creams, many of those types of products. Okay, so why would you use retinol on the skin if it potentially has an eye side effect, which I'll talk about later? Well, the whole reason that retinoids and retinoid derivatives are used is that they increase cell turnover. They also increase hyperpigmentation and roughness of the tissues where they're applied. And finally, they decrease fine lines and wrinkles by stimulating glycosaminoglycan, glycogen, and collagen. Say that 10 times fast, it's impossible. <laughs> Now, retinol has actually many forms. There's first, second, and third generations. And most of the subtypes of retinol are very, very difficult to say. All of the different types of retinol are used for the same reasons. I myself use retinol. It's not something that I used in my 20s, but as I've gotten into my later 30s, retinol is definitely something that's on my radar. So anybody who's kind of past their 20s and getting into their 30s, nearing that magic 40 number, is gonna be intrigued by a product that's gonna decrease their fine lines and wrinkles, even out their skin tone, and kind of um, also even out the texture of their skin. I think those all certainly sound like positive. So what does retinol do that's so bad for the eyes? So retinoids in the eyes are not necessarily enemies in all aspects. Retinoid is a derivative of vitamin A and vitamin A is actually treated differently by different ocular structures, but it just so happens that the meibomian glands and retinoids are not friends. So just as a review, and I've talked about this many times before, I'll link one of the videos where I discuss dry eye and meibomian glands up above. Meibomian glands are linear glands that run along the lower and upper eyelids. They're sebaceous glands, and as we blink naturally, these glands are gently compressed and they let out a nice layer of oil. Now our eyes rely on this layer of oil because that's what gives you such a clear, even tear film. You have to have a clear, even tear film for your ocular surface because that's what allows you to have a clear image and see very, very clearly. I'll often tell my patients that if your lipid layer of your tears is messed up, if you have a very poor tear film, it's kind of like trying to look through a car windshield when there's little water droplets on it. Images get reflected, you can be really light sensitive, and ultimately a breakdown in the tears ends up causing dry eye. So we know that meibomian glands are essential for tear film stability, and tear film stability is essential for clarity and comfort. So let me give you one example of a well-known retinoid that can cause some eye problems with the meibomian glands. Accutane or 13 cis retinoic acid, I may have gotten that switched around, but the trade name, the brand name is Accutane. And many people have been on Accutane, um, especially when they're younger and have acne problems on the skin. 
Accutane is used successfully in folks with acne because it decreases sebaceous production. But guess what else is a sebaceous gland? That's right, the meibomian glands are sebaceous glands. So meibomian glands are just big sebaceous glands, so it makes sense that they would be damaged the same as the sebaceous glands of the face. And if you're taking Accutane orally, the reason is to reduce the you know, sebaceous secretion of the glands on the face, but there's a secondary effect where your meibomian glands are affected too. Patients who've taken oral Accutane in the past can have meibomian gland drop out. We do end up seeing meibomian gland atrophy in these patients. What's good for the skin of the face is not necessarily good for the skin of the eyelids and the eyes. So I use um, retinoids on my skin. Another thing we've talked about is that your skin can be very sensitive to retinoids. So they're not typically something you can use every single day right away or that you necessarily want to. Most people have to work up to using retinol um, that often. And honestly, um, you know, I still only use it maybe a couple of times a week. But if you're gonna be using retinol, and I'm not saying that you have to stop, I wanna give you some tips so that you can use it safely and not set yourself up for this meibomian gland atrophy and potential dry eye complications later on. So my first tip is if you're gonna use retinol or retinol de derivatives in your uh, makeups and creams, then make sure to not put them directly around the eye. Avoid that thin skin around the eyelids, avoid direct um, exposure to the eyelids themselves because the further you can keep them away from those meibomian glands, the less of a chance you have of causing atrophy of the gland. The second is to remain vigilant about some home DIY meibomian gland um, maintenance. And it's as simple as warm compresses followed by lid massage. An effective warm compress has to be used for 10 to 15 minutes of heat. You don't wanna use a warm washcloth. It's much better to use a medical grade compress like a Bruder or an Optase mask. I've made videos about both of those and I'll make sure to link them here. After you've used your warm compress, I recommend doing an eyelid massage. So you wanna go on that top lid 10 times firmly down and out. You're basically massaging those meibomian glands. You've heated them up and got, gotten them nice and squishy and the oil's nice and soft. And then you're gonna just gently massage downward and outward on the top lids, up and out on the bottom lids. Do 10 each way. My final recommendation is to see your eye doctor and ask your eye doctor if they have meibomian gland imaging. I recently um, had a patient who'd been using retinol for many, many years, and we discovered massive meibomian gland shortenings because meibomian glands should really be long and bright white. After some further history with the patient, we realized that that's what had happened. This particular patient had been using retinol for years and years and not being careful about you know, its exposure to the eye, getting it nice and close. And so we believe in this case, that's what happened, that that gland dropout and shortening is due to all of the retinol use. And then finally, one thing that might make your glands come back, because I know that's the question, right? If I've done this, if I had to be on Accutane as a teenager, and now I have dry eye and my meibomian glands are all shortened, is there anything that can be done? One of the things that can be done is um, external heat therapy followed by expression in office. So you remember when I told you about warm compresses followed by lid massage? This is that on steroids. I did a video about tear care. I've actually done a couple videos. But tear care is basically external heat that's very well controlled, 115 degrees for 15 minutes. Your glands get nice and oily, and then your doctor can go through and express your glands in office. Once you get those glands nice and soft, that oil comes right out. We can get rid of the impacted gland. We can get it moving again and, and free the gland of all that impacted oil so that it can make fresh oil again. Again, you just you want all of your meibomian glands working together, producing good oil that's gonna coat your tears and give you that nice tear film that gives you clear vision and comfortable eyes. Meibomian glands play a critical role in your tear film, your tear film stability, and they're so, so important. And so if you use retinol, make sure to follow my tips in this video and don't use it right around your eyes. 
If you've used Accutane in the past, I know there's a lot of ocular conditions that can occur because of Accutane. Leave a comment down below and tell me about your experience with Accutane. In addition, tell me about retinol use. Um, has your doctor ever shown you your, you your meibomian glands? Are they shortened like they are in my patient? And what have you done to get your glands back in better shape? Thank you as always for listening. And um, I wanna apologize about the train in the background. My office is right next to a train station. So that's part of the fun. You just get to hear the trains go by. You know, pr products are being moved across the United States. Commerce, things are happening. So make sure to join us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. I'll see you next time.